We're going to get to this energy reform stuff in a moment because I think it's really, really important, actually. Um, but before we do, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind indulging us a little bit, Kurt, we do have to take a visit to our friends up in New York um, because uh, um, the way that almost <laughs> I've presents- I've got it. I've got it right here. I'm so ready that you did your homework. Um, <laughs> You know, because the way that OMLO is presented um, in, in the U.S., again, is, as you, we were saying earlier, is like, you know, this kind of authoritarian anti-democracy. And I always try to give people the benefit of, of the doubt, because even when I'm looking on the New York Times for its coverage on Mexico, it's actually surprisingly sparse um, in, in English. I don't know. You'd think our neighbor, there's a lot of things that are going on. Um, there'd be a lot more coverage of what's going on internally and in, in Mexico. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, there's a few and far between. Um, but this is a piece here, um, that was published. Oh, sorry, Matt. It's the, um, oh, different ones. the biggest, I have it right here. No, yeah. worries. um, <laughs> yeah, the biggest promoter of Mexico's presidential recall election, the president. It's coming right here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just an amazing title. If anybody, if anybody wants to play along at home, bring this up on your screen and we can go through this. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Um, um, you know, we should just do a special segment on, you know. Let's do it. New York Times dumb reporting on, on Latin America. <laughs> a regular, oh, a regular be, segment. Um, we definitely, we wouldn't run out. Yeah, take us. I mean, I have a couple lined up, but if you if you want to go through this and note some of them, I'd be happy to. Well, let's just go through some of them. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we're we're going about four paragraphs down. Mr. Lopez Obrador has called the recall an exercise of democracy, and that's in quotes, right? Because <laughs> recall isn't by nature an exercise in democracy, so that has to be put in quotes, right? <laughs> Critics say it actually amounts to something far more cynical. You know, an effort to bolster the president's claim to power. Actually, the president doesn't need a claim to power because he's very popular and he won by 30 million with 30 million votes and a tool to undermine his detractors. Yes, the whole thing was a cunning plan to make his detractors look stupid. Actually, they <laughs> on their own by sitting it out. Right? <laughs> how, how, how does how did he know ahead of time that they were going to boycott the recall? Yeah. He just especially. He just, he, yeah, especially given the fact that what we are told here on, you know, English Twitter, at least, is that OMLO is extremely unpopular and everybody is just waiting for their moment to finally throw the tyrant and the dictator. Oh, out yes. Of office. yes, yes, of course. As, as we saw. And actually, in that other article that you put up bef before this one, the Mexican voters back Lopez Obrador, they said uh, this, this Natalie Kitrov, no, OMLO's approval rating has has slipped dangerous from 66 to 59 percent. That's actually. <laughs> As an American, it's just like, what are you talking? Yeah. It's like Biden. Biden would drool, and that's that's not ageism. Biden would would love to have even fifty nine percent, right? And that <laughs> polls, you know, he's up in the high sixties or whatever else, right? But just this menacing, his popularity has slipped to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just so pathetic. A, a um, majority of the population, <laughs> right? <laughs> And they, and they chose the lowest of the polls to, to get there. Of course. Um, so, and then it says down here, Mr. Lopez Obrador proposed the recall. Actually, he proposed it in all of his presidential campaigns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's actually a campaign promise that he had to fulfill. Because let's just imagine if AMLO had been unpopular now, right? As the conservatives thought he would be by now. Imagine if his popularity was down in Biden levels, right? Mm-hmm. The opposition would be demanding that he hold the recall. They would be demanding right. that he hold the recall. And why isn't he holding the recall? He and promised. Mm -hmm. he promised it during the campaign and he's not doing it. That's exactly what would be happening right now. And so would the New York Times if his popularity were down, was down where they thought it would be by now. But because AMLO's popularity didn't follow their narrative, they had to change it, right? They had to flip it on its head, right? Mm -hmm. And try to turn it into something else. Analysts say he will use it to manufacture a political victory, even if participation is low. Well, actually, he doesn't need to manufacture anything. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to, right? Um, this is supposed to be a mechanism for civic control of power, but it's become instead an instrument of political propaganda, says Carlos Bravo Regidor, political analyst. So a recall is, is propaganda now. A recall is propaganda, right? Opening yourself up to getting thrown out of office is propaganda. <clears throat> Next paragraph. 
On a balmy Monday in Mexico City, volunteers in the president's camp fanned out across a residential neighborhood armed with flyers and wide grins. <laughs> Advertise, you know, flyers and wide grins. <laughs> Can we be little people anymore? It's the purge. Nearby polling stations and telling anyone who would listen to go vote in the recall. Actually, that's what canvassing is. Yes, I know. I mean, this, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Canvassing is telling people who will listen, actually. But you see, like, this, this, little people? I'm sorry. <laughs> No, 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 no. This, I mean, this is great. I mean, I just really want to highlight again, like, this is why we, you know, selected this piece, because, you know, I had just read it. You know, I, I read the New York Times, you know, to sort of see what everyone else is reading. And I read this piece, and even for the way that Alma is usually covered, I was just amazed, because everything is made out to be sinister. I mean, like, everything. You, know, you, use, you use the word recall, and like, obviously, that's the correct terminology, because that's the kind of vote it is. But you use a new term like that, and it makes it seem like something like imagine that that line right here. Um, where he says, uh, you know, um, AMLO has called the vote an exercise in democracy. Like that just yeah. automatically sounds completely absurd, right? It's always using in quotes, kind of, in yes. quotes right? It's, it's an exercise in democracy, right? Or people being armed with flyers, yeah. right? Yes. Um, you, you know, I mean, it's there, there is a tone to it that is, is yeah. it's it's so apparent. It's it's well, truly it's truly really amazing. It's so condescending, Just, is what it is. It's absolutely <laughs> condescending to people who believe in democracy and are out yes. there spending their volunteer time to promote an exercise in direct democracy, which the country has never had. And, and this is this is an opinion piece, or this is not an opinion piece, right? This is just news. It's not an opinion piece, right? Um, next paragraph. Alan Polsos, one of the group's leaders, said he hoped the exercise would set a precedent so future leaders could be kicked out, kicked out if needed. This time, though, he just wants the president to know he's loved. See? Oh. That's how they belittle supporters, because they make them sound like mindless, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, mindless bots who are out there supporting uh, the president, right? Imagine all these New York Times readers over their cappuccinos, right? And, and have, oh, 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 they just want the president to know he's loved, oh, right? Um, a few more doubt. Tell me if, if we're going over time on this. No, no, I mean, this is great. I, this is perfect for us. <laughs> a couple paragraphs down. Such a show of support could not come at a better time for the president. Hmm who has passed the midpoint of his term while struggling to deliver on key campaign promises. Actually, the recall is a campaign promise. <laughs> this was a campaign promise, actually. He won on this platform, actually. Um, that swept into office on a landslide uh, victory, right? <clears throat> and then, of course, they go through, you know, the country is not where it's supposed to be because, you know, there's, there's been a pandemic and yeah. all this stuff. Um, as has happened all over the world, um, and next, next paragraph. But he's remained popular. This, this, this flummoxes the New York Times that he's popular despite their, you know, their piercing analysis that he shouldn't be, and mm -hmm. not listening to them in, in in Mexico. With more than half of Mexicans approving of his performance, polls show his government has sought to improve the lot of the poor, raising the minimum wage four times, and boosting welfare spending, which is coded, right? Because if it's welfare, imagine what Americans think of welfare. Oh, for sure. <laughs> or whatever else. When actually it's been a very series of universal programs, which is more like, you know, Social Security, Medicare, like that. So actually the comparison should be with the universal programs in the United States, right? But they didn't, they don't say that. They say welfare, because that's a flash word. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Lopez Obrador has also won points with symbolic gestures. This is how the New York Times explains why he's popular, with symbolic gestures, right? And then the next paragraph, they talk about his high favor uh, is also a tribute to his relentless broadcasting of an official narrative. So he's not popular because he's done things for people, like raise the minimum wage, um, senior pensions, scholarships for student aid to farmers, you know, uh, unemployment pension, disability pension, aid to single mothers. None of those things. It's just been symbolic gestures and relentless broadcasting an official narrative. Because that would be the only way to justify why he remains popular, right? To a stupid public, who can't appreciate the fact that he's actually improved their material lives. Right? People are too, I mean, must be too stupid or too caught up in the messianic love of AMLO to be able to appreciate that he has actually improved their material lives. Let me share this with you. I, I didn't send this to you beforehand, um, but this is something that I saw just this afternoon. Um, oh. This is, um, <laughs> let me just show this to you. I'll, I'll, I'll put the translate on for our, our friends here. 
Um, but this is making a pretty nasty insinuation about Om Omlo's victory here, uh, which is basically saying that the more illiterate the population becomes, the more likely that they are to vote to Omlo. I mean, vote for Omlo. I mean, this is just. I, 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 I mean, this is like anti-poor, anti-working people, certainly anti-indigenous as far as it goes. And like, I, I just don't think because it, it doesn't penetrate into the kind of American media sphere as much how severe this hatred of, of, of the people really is from a political class um, in Mexico and certainly right. from Americans who are following this too. The elitism and the classism, and it's a racism because the South of Mexico is is, is much more indigenous, right? Mm -hmm. Than, than, than the north and center. So it's, it's a very toxic brew there. And it's actually not very far away from what the New York Times is saying, right? Mm -hmm. People are, are dumb. And so they are taken in by symbolic gestures and relentless broadcasting of an official narrative, right? Mm -hmm. Then, you know, making a very rational decision, you know. Um, here's just an example. I was just talking, I was out, we were out in a Pueblo outside of Oaxaca the other day um, with a family who wrote out the pandemic because... Um, the, the, the grandparents in the family now have a pension. Uh, the children in the family now have scholarships, stay in school scholarships. If they stay in school and maintain grades, they, 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 they get a scholarship. And because they're family of farmers, they were also getting farm aid. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, I it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty rational choice. It's a pretty rational decision. <laughs> and they said, this family said, and it's very interesting, if, we, if this country has enough money to do all this, why didn't they do it before? Where was all the money going before? That's a very rational question because it was getting stolen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, but, because the line is always, we're too poor for these things. Well, but it turns out there was budget for all these things. Where was it going before? Well, it was getting, it was getting stolen. But, but Kurt, I mean, he's doing it all wrong. He's, he's doing it all wrong. He's not living in the presidential mansion. He's right. not riding in the private jet. I mean, it, it, there truly is. I mean, um, uh, again, I mean, and this is, I mean, this is not even unique to the way Mexico is covered. It's like whenever working people are, right. are, are supporting a kind of rational decision um, to say that, like, you know, we want more social spending. We want good programs yeah. here. They're treated as as idiots. Right. Like. This is a very specific example, but it was one thing that really pissed me off here in the States because, you know, there's a big thing about, oh, is Texas going to turn Democrat because of the demographics, right? And, you know, you're finding that a lot of people in, in, in South Texas still vast majority of them vote Democrat, but there's like been some inroads for the Republican Party. And when Trump got elected, uh, when, sorry, in, in, when he lost, but uh, when in, in 2020, when um, <laughs> during that election, Trump made some gains in, in South Texas. And um, when people did interviews with folks, um, people said things like, you know, they sent me money and that really helped my family out. Right. And we can do all the real negotiations like, oh, that wasn't really Trump. That was Congress or whatever. But there was this kind of snideness about it. it's like, oh, these That's people right. are stupid. And it's like, well, no, the government could and should have been doing a hell of a lot for people for a very long time. And this is just an example of people being extremely rational and saying, if the government's going to look out for me and my family, I'm going to support it. Right. And like if Trump is taking false credit for it, like that's on y'all to be out there first and foremost, like owning those kind of policies and saying you want to win on those, which Biden wasn't doing. And actually, in a lot of those communities in South Texas were Mexican-American communities. Mm -hmm. And you heard some of the same thing. You know, oh, these Mexican-Americans, you know, they just love these uh, messianic power figures like Trump, which, you know, hence the Trump-AMLO comparisons. They're, mm -hmm. so they're easily taken in. They're easily taken in by, uh, you know, strong men because they're Latinos. You know, they never said it. They never ever said it that explicitly. But that was up. <laughs> For sure. That doesn't surprise me at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, are there any more highlights in this piece before we move on? Um, I don't want to rush you. I know. Yeah, it's I don't want to belabor the point. I think I think most people, I think most people yeah. get it. Um, just one more towards the end. Just yes. Um, there are, of course, strategic benefits that could come from asking the country to weigh in on what <laughs> like the president at this particular moment, because it's all just a strategic benefit. Uh, Mr. Lopez Obrador founded his political party and has an obvious interest in doing everything possible to ensure its victory, right? This is a, a continuation of the narrative that he only did it to, to benefit, you know, benefit himself as a political strategy and for Morena to win uh, next time around. I mean, um, obviously this is coming from, from the states here, but do you think that there's an effort because, you know, you're making the, the point that I think is really important here um, that 
you know, this is adding a precedent that could be very beneficial in the future. Are, do you think that there is so much kind of, you know, freak out about this and trying to treat it as illegitimate to basically trying to block, you know, a future attempt to call for a recall, um, you know, if a right wing president comes into power in the, in the near future? I think that's absolutely the case. Yeah. And I think that's why the opposition is, is scared of this. It's scared of this because they do not want to establish the precedent of um, <clears throat> someone else, you know, um, a very toxic right wing president being subject to a recall. I think that that's very clear.